it's going to look different and they're going to revert it back to the original design. I personally love that. I think it's great, but maybe maybe other people have different opinions or maybe it's like too different and too blue. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think about the changes that they're talking about. There we go. For my previous question, before or after, previous or restored, which one do you like and prefer? Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be watching and reacting to Inside Big Ben's Makeover. Of course, you know, Big Ben as well, but the Elizabeth Tower. I remember when I was there in 2018, there was scaffolding everywhere. I posted a picture in a previous video that I did, but I'll post another one here of what it looked like when I was on, on the river, just taking a river taxi. Which by the way, those river taxis are amazing. Those were, we were on those every single day. And you pass by so much, so many places that I wanted to see you pass by and you could just hop on, hop off of those things. So got a picture of MI6. I didn't really care about the London Eye, but I still took a picture of it. Go by, you know, of course, Big Ben, the Parliament, the HMS Belfast, which I love because I love anything World War II related. Saw the Tower of London and Tower Bridge. It's a good time. It's a good time and it's pretty cheap. Now that I got that out of my system, back to the video. Inside Big Ben makeover, this is just going through what have they been doing, I believe. I haven't watched it yet, but I think the description said, you know, going over what they've been doing what they've changed, I guess. There's slight changes, I think, to like the glass, how it's now look. And still seeing shrapnel from World War II still in this tower, just embedded into it. So I think they're just kind of cleaning everything up, removing pieces, adding pieces, making it look like it did when it was originally built or more like that, I believe. So this is going to dive into the work on it. The renovation started in 2017. I was unfortunately there the year after that. So it was really busy with scaffolding. And I believe it's it's slated to be completed in 2022, unless that was pushed back. This video will probably answer all of those questions. Let's get started. Let's change the screen. I like my new screen uh, switching. Let's begin. Good channel, by the way. Great channel right here. I'm in a truly unique location. Only a handful of times in history has temporary scaffolding enabled people to stand here, outside the clock face of one of the world's most famous landmarks. We're here to show you how the clock tower known as Big Ben is getting a 21st century makeover. That's crazy. That is awesome. How can you, how can you not love it? It's one of our most sort of loved buildings as a country. It represents the country around the world, so we've, we've got to get it right. To bring up uh, this building to the 21st century, it's essential to maintain it for our future generations. Big Ben doesn't belong to one single person, it belongs to everyone. It's going to be enormously rewarding when we get to take down the scaffolding and get to show everyone what we've been working on for the last few years. So is that blue color that they showed on it real quick before it really jumps into it? Is that blue color on this? Is that the new kind of like the original color what it was? Or are they talking about the, the panels are supposed to be a tinge of something else? Guess we'll find out that as well. Mm -hmm. Rising dramatically above the Palace of Westminster in the political heart of the UK's capital, the Elizabeth Tower has witnessed some of the most significant moments in British history, standing as a symbol of resilience through two world wars to emerge as an enduring beacon of democracy. While the tower is widely referred to as Big Ben, this name actually refers to the clock's main bell, which first marked the hour on the tower's completion back in 1859. Wow. In the 160 years since, as London has evolved from the capital of the British Empire into one of the world's leading financial centres, mm -hmm. the tower has been subject to weathering, pollution and wartime bomb damage. 
Despite undergoing several deep cleans and refurbishments over the decades, 2017 saw the first complete restoration commence. Set to cost almost £80 million, the four-year project will restore the building's external fabric, renovate the clock itself, improve internal areas, add energy-efficient lighting, and install an elevator. Those are pretty big. Working on a project of this pro- I remember seeing, I think it was a trivia question. It was a trivia question about how many steps are in the Big Ben or in the Elizabeth Tower. I forget what it was. Maybe I'll add it into this video as well, but that was pretty interesting. With no elevator, of course there wasn't, but now that they're adding an elevator, that's a, you know, that's huge. That's really big. And were tourists or are tourists able to go on a tour of the Big Ben? Never really heard of that, but just to like go up and maybe they're going to open it. And if, if you were, I'm sure you were allowed to go in, in it in the past, you know, in the 50s or something. So if, if that's the case, please let me know when they stop that and if you've been in it. Profile in such a secure and demanding location above a live parliament is an extreme task. With its bells silenced to avoid deafening workers and only ringing to mark Remembrance Day and New Year, UK contractor Sir Robert McAlpine first enclosed the entire tower in scaffolding, a careful process that took six months to complete. We built the scaffold obviously from the ground up to the top uh, and then the works to the exterior envelope of the building start from the top and then work down to the bottom. So right at the top of the scaffold um, is the cast iron roof which is about the, the top third of the tower. All of the roof is made of cast iron so we've got cast iron tiles uh, which sit on a cast iron structure and then there's various other bits of ornamentation so wrought iron ornamentation and copper and brass and things. The iron roof tiles and much of the decorative detailing at the top of the tower was removed and taken off-site for hand restoration. The contractor looking after the cast iron roofs before us has a really well thought out system. Every single component has a unique number on it and regardless of where it is in the country we're able to log on and see its location um, within the tower, what work has been done to it, whether it's been recast and where its current location within the country is. That's great, very efficient. Very good. Progressing down the tower, the quality of every piece of stonework was assessed. Where replacement stone was needed, craftsmen painstakingly hand-carved replacements in an on-site facility at the base of the tower. Imagine having in that total, job. more than 700 new segments were created and installed. And this is a thing that you never, I mean, it's a beautiful tower. It's amazing, it's iconic but you don't see the details like this that you're seeing in this video, up close details. You know it's intricate, but it's just so far away. It's a tall tower, it's a big tower, it's kind of far away from you and you look straight up at it. So you never really notice you know, the majesty of it, that the detail and uh, intricacies of this tower, which you're seeing here in this video, which is amazing. This here is a great place to see three generations of stonework in one location. So this here is an original stone that was put in when the Elizabeth Tower was first constructed. This is actually a replacement piece of stone that was put in in an earlier restoration. But as you can see, they actually used a more porous type of stonework and this hasn't weathered as well as the original stonework, despite this being newer. And then this down here, is a new stone that was put in as part of this restoration project. Now, unfortunately, this stone from the original quarry isn't available anymore as this tower was constructed 160 years ago. But what the team have done is match the stonework as best they can, and in time, this will weather so Big Ben will look much more like it did when it was first constructed. This here is stone that has been restored as part of this project, and this is the colour that the stone was before this project started. Whoa. So you can see the colour difference. difference is extraordinary. So that's what they're just kind of cleaning away, wiping away. I don't know how the sandblasted away, but very, very carefully, probably with hands. They don't sandblast it, but that is a huge difference. That's what I'm talking about. Like the, the amount of care that they're putting into this will really make it look, I think, slightly different when you actually see it from before and after. I feel like you will be able to see these details up there. You might be able to see like how intricate this is and, and all the pieces that are added into this. Which is great for us. The most impressive part of these works is undoubtedly the restoration of the clock faces themselves. And being able to get up close and mm. actually touch the face of Big Ben was a once in a lifetime experience. I bet. 
Each of the 324 pieces of hand-cut glass on each face are being replaced, while the colouring of the hands, numerals and surrounding decoration is being restored to the striking blue, green and gold shown on the tower's original design. I like the that. works that we did. What are your thoughts on these changes? It's going to look different and they're going to revert it back to the original design. I personally love that. I think it's great, but maybe maybe other people have different opinions or maybe it's like too different and too blue. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think about the changes that they're talking about. So the clock faces are more significant than, than have been done in the past. So the glass you can see at the moment is all entirely new. It was last reglazed in the 1950s um, after the damage was caused by wow. bombing in the Second World War. So what we've done is we've taken all of the glass out, um, we've blasted all of the paint systems off the clock dial, so it's gone right back to the original cast iron. The reason for doing that is we have to do repairs to the cast iron, so there's, there's a limited amount of corrosion, but there's also some original casting defects, so little pinholes in the cast iron uh, that need drilling out so they can be filled and repaired. Uh, and then we put the highest quality paint system back on again. As part of that, obviously, we strip all of the previous layers of paint off, so we have to do a lot of research about what the previous colour schemes were. Um, so finding out the history of the colours has been really, uh, really imagine, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, the blue is, is a very new addition for everyone to see. Yeah, and it's not, I must say, as long as you're up close to it here, you really get just how much of a difference it is. It looks fantastic. It's, it's lovely, the blue. Yeah, really. Sh I love it. I love the blue. I think it looks very, very nice. The mixture of the blues, the whites, and the golds on here, I think it'll make the, the tower look more vibrant. More, more uh, <laughs> The originality of it is, is exciting shines in the sunshine. With a requirement for at least one face of the tower to be left exposed at all That's times good... during the works, Londoners have been getting a glimpse good of what image. awaits them when the restoration is complete. There we go. For my previous question, before or after, previous or restored, which one do you like and prefer? Like I said, the, the one on the right, I like it more. That's my personal opinion. You know, you've you've grown up seeing, or I've grown up seeing the previous version of it, of course, in the movies and magazines, everything that you've seen growing up. But the right one is more, it's more fun. It's more, more historical because they're going back to the original uh, color scheme. Before 2017, the only way to reach the top of the tower was by a narrow stone staircase a daunting obstacle for clock keepers and the visitors alike. But since the tower's been built, there's only been one way up and one way down from the belfry, which has been the, the, the spiral stone staircase in the yeah. corner of the tower. Uh, what sits next to the spiral stone staircase is a ventilation shaft that goes all the way from the basement all the way up to the belfry. Uh, so what we're doing is we're fitting a lift into the ventilation shaft so that you'll have two ways up and two ways down. They're going to the love new that. elevator added in these works, cleverly hidden within the Elizabeth Tower's original structure, improves access for maintenance and evacuations. The team began their works at the top of the tower and are steadily working their way down, gradually removing the scaffolding as they progress. Big Ben is now beginning to re-emerge on London's skyline, and the extent Finally. of its transformation is dramatic. Led by a young and technology-savvy team, from craftsmen to information modelling specialists, the restoration of this heritage structure has been helped by some truly 21st century techniques. Many that just reminds me of the Wars of the Roses, the Lancasters, the Yorks, you know, that, that kind of thing. And maybe this is, uh, this is exactly that. I'm just not quite knowledgeable enough on this, but it looks exactly the same. It's probably the same thing. It's probably, uh, probably you know, the Lancasters and Yorks and all that stuff, just the houses. The houses? Many of the original paper plans and records from previous masons projects were incomplete or inaccurate, and understanding the tower's structure and condition was a challenging task. To address this and make future restorations easier, the project team are creating detailed digital records of almost every aspect of the Elizabeth mm. Tower, building off the tagging and tracking system used in the works. 
what we did at the start was a point cloud of the project uh, to understand how how the building was working. So for instance, we have a slight lean in the lift shaft, so to place a um, vertical structure in, in that space, we needed to have this information, knowing exactly how the building had been working and then understanding this to, for the construction. So we have a full model of the tower. Um, we have a model of each individual stone and each individual tile um, in, in the tower as well. Um, so we can actually we can apply loads of information about what happened to those elements in the past, what we're doing now, and then hopefully it'll be useful in the uh, in the future. Sure the heart be. of the tower, which is the clock, we don't have a full comprehensive set of records. Um, as part of this project, we're engaging with those new technologies to ensure that we have a full comprehensive set of ONMs and also the computer models which will support that in the future. So if there's ever a need to make a new component, we don't need to stop the clock per se, we can go and have it cast separately. As this team worked to restore Big Ben for our generation, They've discovered notes and messages tucked into crevices and openings in the stonework, left behind from previous workers wishing them well. What's well, nice. The restoration of Big Ben is in fact taking place in advance of a much larger and highly complex refurbishment across the Palace of Westminster. As works progress into the Lords and Commons chambers, the UK's Parliament will be temporarily relocated. Standing through the reigns of six British monarchs, the tenures of 30 different prime ministers, and some of the greatest and darkest moments of its country's history, Big Ben has witnessed the birth of modern Britain. Despite falling silent in recent years, what the remarkable team have achieved behind this scaffolding through thousands of hours of carving, gilding and documenting, with extreme care and attention to detail, will return this British icon to its former glory, allowing it to stand as a symbol of free democracy for generations to come. If you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M. And that is that. I think that was a fun, great channel. The B1M, really good channel for construction and things that are just going on around in the world. These massive construction projects. But this video shows you really how much kind of the world and the British love the Big Ben. It's just so much a part of their history. It's always been around. It's kind of like, you know, a symbol for them. And it, it's great to see the care and delicate work of every stone in the Big Ben to bring it to, you know, it's kind of like its formal glory. It, what it used to be originally, I guess, has always been glorious, just, you know, original glory. <laughs> Don't know if that came out right. Overall, I think these changes will be very accepted by the people. And once again, let me know if I'm wrong, but just let me know what you think of these changes. I want to hear, I love hearing from the people who are actually there, who live there, who, who see this maybe every day. I know there's a large portion of the people who watch these videos that, that do live there, do live in London, UK, and I just want to hear from you all to see what you truly think of these renovations. I think it's, it's great, and even documenting everything for the future, it's going to make things much easier for future renovations and, and construction works on this project to be done because of that. They're really looking into the future to make sure that one of one of the most iconic landmarks in the world stays, you know, top notch and they're doing a great job with it. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. And um, until next time, we'll uh, dive into more of these types of videos and yeah, have a good rest of your day.